State data is scary, but it doesn't have to be. Let's take a look at what's in there. Hey everyone, it's Ned Bellance, nedinthecloud.com. Welcome back to my series, Terraform Basics. In today's episode, we'll be exploring state data in Terraform. This is a critical concept to understand, so let's dive in. If you wanna understand why Terraform does what it does, the answer lies in state data. Terraform uses state data to map real-world resources to your configuration, keep track of metadata, and store attributes of resources. Essentially, the only way Terraform knows that it is managing a real-world resource is through an entry in state data. If the entry is removed or state data is lost, Terraform will not know about the actual infrastructure it's supposed to be managing. By way of example, I have a simple configuration in the Terraform Tuesday repository, and what it does is create local files. It uses the local file resource with the default provider and with an aliased provider. It also uses a module that creates local files. The module is invoked using both count and for each, and it has an output defined for the root module. My goal here was to see how these various objects were represented in state data. I've already run a Terraform init and apply on this configuration, and it's created the files that are in the configuration. It also created the terraform.tf state file. So let's talk about what's in that file. State data is stored as JSON in a state backend. The default backend is called local, and it stores the state data in a file called terraform.tf state in the root of your working directory. Now you can also use remote backends like AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, Google Cloud Storage, and Terraform Cloud. I'm not gonna cover remote backends in this video, but I'll do that in a future video. What I really wanna get at is the structure of state data and how you can manipulate it safely. I try to keep the basics videos on the shorter side, so in this video, we'll cover the structure, and in a future video, we'll cover how to manage state data. As I just mentioned, state data is stored as JSON. I wish I could say that there was an official schema published by HashiCorp that outlines the structure of state data, but there isn't. The structure is considered an implementation detail and is subject to change between Terraform versions, which is why the safest way to manipulate and interact with state data is through the Terraform CLI or declaratively in your configuration. Nevertheless, we can glean some helpful information from state data and better understand how Terraform functions by looking at the JSON structure. Standard disclaimer here, while it's okay to look at the state data, you should never edit it directly. Say that again, don't edit the JSON directly. Here there be dragons. Cracking open the state data, the first thing you'll notice are the top level keys. So let's go through them. Version refers to the version of the state data format. Terraform uses this value to determine whether it is safe to read or write to state. This prevents older versions of Terraform from erroring out when they encounter data written by newer versions of Terraform, and it signals to a newer version of Terraform that the state data needs to be upgraded. The Terraform version key is used to track the version of Terraform that last wrote to state data. It doesn't prevent other versions of Terraform from interacting with the state data, but it could help you in a debugging scenario where something went wrong and you suspect it's a bug with your version of Terraform. The serial number is used to track updates to state data and avoid race conditions. Let's start with an example. Let's say I have two users, Alice and Bob. They're both working on the same Terraform configuration. They make different changes, and then they both run a Terraform plan and save the execution plan to a file. When Alice goes to apply that plan, Terraform will check the serial number of the state data and if it matches the saved plan, it will apply the changes. When Bob goes to apply his plan later, Terraform will see that the plan is stale because the serial numbers don't match and it will prompt him to run a fresh plan. 
The lineage key is a unique key to identify the state data. Once again, this is used by saved execution plans to ensure they're being applied to the correct instance of state data. If you have multiple workspaces that are using the same configuration, or you happen to be in the wrong directory and you try to apply a plan file, Terraform will see that the lineage does not line up and will error out. All of this metadata is really an implementation detail and subject to change, so don't rely on it for your scripts or automation. Terraform stores three types of objects in state, outputs, resources, and check results. The last one is new with the introduction of check blocks in Terraform 1.5. I covered check blocks in a previous video, so check that out if you're interested. Instead, let's focus on the first two objects, outputs and resources. Outputs are stored in state data and updated during a Terraform apply operation. Keep in mind, Terraform will almost never alter state data outside of an apply operation. There are some exceptions, and we'll cover those in the next video. Root module outputs are stored in the outputs key and are a map of the output names to their values and data types. And that's really it. You could try and parse the raw JSON to get the output values, but it is far easier to use the Terraform output command. In fact, the Terraform output command can format outputs as JSON, so you can use it in your scripts and automation. Resources are stored in the resources key. And when I say resources, I am referring to both resources and data sources in your configuration. It's confusing, I know. You might notice this is a list of objects and not a map. Each object in the list from the resource key maps to a resource or a data source block in your configuration, including objects inside of modules. If the object is in a child module, the module key will be populated with the path to the module. If the object is in the root module, the module key will be omitted. The mode refers to whether the object is a resource or a data source. Managed means it is a resource, and if the entry is data, that means it's a data source. Type will be the resource type or data source type. The name key is the name label of the resource or data source. The provider is the provider type, including the alias, if there is one. Below that, the instances key is each instance of the object in the configuration block. So if you're using a meta argument like count or for each, you'll see multiple instances in here. Otherwise, you'll just see the one instance. Each instance has attributes that are specific to that resource or data source. These are the values that are exported by the object and can be referenced elsewhere in your configuration using the standard syntax. You do not need to parse the raw JSON to get these values. You can include them as outputs in your configuration and use the Terraform output command to retrieve them. Or if you really want, you can use the Terraform show command with the dash JSON flag. This will give you a standardized version of state data that you can use in your scripts and automation. Although really just expose it as an output if you really need that information. And I think that's a good place to end this video. I hope this has given you a solid background on state data in Terraform. In the next Terraform Basics video, I'm going to go over the life cycle of state data and how to manage it through the CLI or through declarative blocks inside the config. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep calm and Terraform on.